G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Friday sort of lunchtime here in Australia and we can see that there is a bit of a downturn. So the weekend is upon us and is this the weekend retracement that we normally get or at least the bottom of it or is this just the start of it? That's what we're going to have to wait and see. But we can see down 2.5%. BTC dominance at 41%, ETH at about 181 and gas prices, I mean, they are super low compared to where they have been. Not the lowest we've ever seen them, not the uh, you know as low as what we need them, but definitely low. And look, we can see it's basically just a sea of red here. There's a little bit of green here and there, but mostly sort of red. All right, has anything pumped in the last 24 hours considering the market's going down? There's usually one or two outliers. All right, helium around about 20%, so doing well. Thorchain, 15%. Theta Network in general, both its fuel and its uh, token, generally doing pretty well, 10 to 12% up. And then we're into just the single digit kind of gains. Any gains a good gain, don't get me wrong, but there's just not a lot of big movement in the market to the upside, hence why the market cap is down. What about to the downside? Are we seeing much? Now the market is only down 2.5%, so I wouldn't imagine there's gonna be some, any massive losses, but let's have a look. And there you go, we can see not really massive losses. Over the seven days, look, there's some pretty big losses, but not so much in the last 24 hours. So generally just single digit sort of losses, hence why the market is sort of traveling sideways at the moment. Now here's what I think might happen. Let's go to the Bitcoin chart and have a look. This is the chart pattern that we've been following. This is what we had happen here, the Wyckoff chart pattern. Now what this reminds me of is this over here the Bart Simpson head pattern one that happened back uh, in July last year. I think the big players have been here for a while and they're just going to keep repeating this pattern. People are going to get you know, smart to it and cotton on, at least those in the know. Those uh, who aren't in the know will just see this as uh, a big, massive uh, sort of gain and they're going to jump on board, i.e. slash the silly money, dumb money, new money, whatever you want to call it. So what I'm looking at is this is the lowest point that I've seen in quite some time. So it was down around kind of $27,000, $28,000. Now, this is the way it's been traveling for a while. It got overextended, hence why the sell-off. They pumped it up even higher and then just let this ride before they then started to dump on the market. That's what the big players are doing, institutions, people who've been in the game for a while, big traders and all the rest of it. Now they know that we know what's going on now. So they're gonna to have to try and do something different. Now what I think is they might start to pump it down and get us down towards this 27K level. Could go lower, absolutely. But I just think this is where it's gonna to get to, down around about here. Now outside of this channel, and a lot of people have put this channel on their charts. I'm not the only one to have done this. or the only one who knows about this stuff. So it's not anything new, but they'll push it down outside of here and then it'll start to travel sideways. Again, it gets real boring. When things are traveling sideways, smart money knows something's going on. And they'll do their analysis and they'll either work out this is uh, going to dump or they think it's gonna pump. So I think it might push down and we might see this for a while. And outside of this channel, I think it goes down to here. No guarantees in life, could be wrong. Again, the options end on Friday and it could be just massive upside, but I'm not sure about that. But people don't want to invest in stuff when it's just chopping sideways. At least, you know, again, the average investor doesn't want to. Long-time investors, smart money, they know that this is either an accumulation or a fake out before it dumps. And they do their chart analysis and work out. But this here was basically accumulation. Again, Bart Hitt Simpson head chart pattern, Wyckoff, whatever you want to call it, dumped off, more accumulation. So it was a lot of accumulation with some market manipulation in there. Really, the accumulation started on the 29th of April last uh, last year and went all the way to over here to basically the 8th of October. So that was months and months and months of accumulation. And then we saw this big runoff. That's what I think we might see again. I don't know if they're going to try any of this Wyckoff stuff again. I mean, they will for sure, but just whether they make it as obvious as what it's been because people are getting smarter. Social media networks and all the rest of it are clued onto this kind of stuff now, so it's going to become harder. So what I think is that they push it down as low as they can 
Uh, and we get a lot of sideways movement. It could last for months. And I go into why I think that might happen. Now, again, it's not financial advice. It's just what I'm considering. doesn't mean I'm panic selling anything. It means I'm accumulating. Now, if we do push down uh, below here and go sideways for quite some time, uh, I'm, this is on the Bitcoin chart, obviously. I'll really be focusing on the big plays. I won't be focusing on the little... Uh, altcoins too much because they're probably going to sell off pretty hard and again I think there'll be some choppy movement it'll be up and it'll be down and all over the place but eventually it'll start to make its way back up into this channel and we'll start to see another move like this that's what I'm expecting that's what I think is going on love to know your thoughts down below do you think that uh, we're going to see a lot of market manipulation and some sideways movement before we see any real upside in the, in the sort of near future anyway uh, long term, I'm still super bullish on cryptos. Now, here's why I'm still bullish at the moment, and I don't think we're in a bear market. Crypto Kraken Exchange says they are still on track for a 2022 public listing. So, based on what's happened previously, that would likely be in a bear market. They're not going to come out with an IP listing in a bear market. They think that this is going to push longer and it's going to be extended. And if we go back to here and we get lots of sideways movement pushing out to, again, you know, September, October, where most people expect the bull run to kind of be over or at least are predicting it to be over. And then we start to see a big move upwards when everyone's starting to uh, expect it to go down. So also we could see sideways movement for a while and one final push down to, again, you know, maybe even sort of 20,000. Uh, again, that's totally possible. And have everyone thinking, not the bear market's in, it's going low before it then starts to rocket back up later in 2021 and going into 2022. That is definitely a possibility. Hence why they're looking at doing their public listing in 2022. Again, there's this is just my thought process at the moment. There's no guarantees. I don't have anything to back that up. But it's just when I see stuff like this, uh, that's what makes me think about things like this. Now, part of what I think is why we're getting some downside now 2.2 billion dollars of notional 2.2 billion notional in BTC options is set to expire on Friday so tomorrow US time end of every month you've got options ending that's what's coming up right now and that's what usually happens right before they end you get this downside now there's some talk out there on Twitter and on YouTube that Bitcoin could rocket to $50,000 after these options are done. So whether it happens on Friday or Saturday or waits till Monday, who knows? And whether it happens at all is still a big question. But I know whenever these options are coming, there's usually some downside before it and then you can take advantage of that. But again, you know, now that more people will start to talk about that and say that, they're going to probably push it the other way. That's what the institutions and big players will do. They will counter trade what everybody else, well not everybody else, because if everybody else is doing it, they're going to get wrecked, but they will counter trade what the kind of sentiment is quite often. Not all the time. Sometimes they have to run with it and ride with it to push it up, but then they will go against it to push it down and take advantage of that. All right, again, more bullish news, which makes me think we're nowhere near a bear market at the moment. Andreessen Horowitz leads $40 million investment round into crypto trading platform. So Talos seeks to accelerate institutional adoption of digital assets. We hear so many stories like this. You're not going to hear that stuff when a bar, a bear market is just about to start or is in. It'll have to wait till things have bottomed out and slowly start to uptick again before you hear news like this. But we hear news like this about, you know, institutions getting in, VC ventures getting in, you know, these new uh, platforms and projects to, you know, assist institutional adoption. We still get stories like this almost every week. That is why I think we are definitely still in the midst of a bull market. We're just a small bear cycle within a bull market. So speaking of Talos, it now has some of the industry's biggest backers supporting its mission. So the raise, which was led by Andreessen Horowitz, also had participation from PayPal Ventures, Fidelity Investments, Galaxy Digital, Elefund, Illuminate, uh, Illuminate maybe, or Illuminate, I'm not sure, I think that's Illuminate <laughs> Financial, uh, and Steadfast Capital Ventures. So again, VCs and that, they're not going to invest in these things in a bear market. And you'd be crazy to bring something out like this in a bear market. You would simply hold and wait for the next uptrend 
because that is where people are going to be more interested in investing and they're going to be more interested in investing more. So again, another reason to make me think we're not in a bull, uh, bear market, we're still in a bull market. And more again, so VCs, they back Balancer with a $24.25 million investment. Investors are backing the Balancer protocol with greater conviction. And could this be a sign that uh, market hype surrounding DeFi is ramping up again? Absolutely, I think DeFi is going to be the biggest play. It's going to make the biggest gains. It's just which ones are going to do it. Don't get me wrong, they'll all get dragged up, but in the end, you know, the gold will come through as they say, you know, the good ones will shine and the ones that weren't that good will just simply fall off. So the capital raise was led by Blockchain Capital, uh, FinTech Collective, Long Hash Ventures, Fenbushi Capital, uh, Continue Capital and Kane Warwick. Warwick, hopefully I said that right, uh, the founder of DeFi Protocol Synthetics. So they have gone into Balancer and they're betting big on it. And look, that was in this round. They've done previous rounds. So last November, November Alameda Capital, Pantera Capital, uh, Three Arrows Capital and DeFinance Capital. They put $5 million in earlier. So obviously some big players are betting on Balancer. So I don't know, check the Balancer uh, token at the moment, see how far up it is or down it is and make a decision. Maybe it's a good buy. Several prominent investors from within the cryptocurrency industry have purchased uh, in Balancer tokens in a coordinated move to springboard adoption of the automated market maker. So again, I don't have anything in Balancer and I'm wishing I had have bought some and maybe I will. I'm, I'm going to buy some crypto today. Uh, not a lot. I've done most of my uh, entries and I'm happy to just see what happens from here. But I still will sort of DCA in a little bit and I'll have a look at Balancer and see where it is considering some big and you know what might be considered smart money is investing. Right, SEC begins formal review of Fidelity and Skybridge Bitcoin ETF applications. So they've been out for a while. You know, there's Canadian ones and a couple of other ones, but we're waiting for the big American ones and to see if that is what is going to push Bitcoin to the next level. So US securities regulators now have six ETF applications on the docket for review. A decision on VanX application is expected next month. So, I mean, we're almost at next month. So it's the 28th of May right now. June is not far away. And I would say if they accept the VanEck one, good chance the other ones get accepted. If the VanEck one gets knocked back, then I'd say there's a good chance the others get knocked back as well. There's always got to be one that has to come first and there's no reason that it has to be VanEck. But from what I have read and, you know, sort of heard, they put in a pretty good application. So really, if they get knocked back, I think it's likely the others would get knocked back. Not guaranteed, though, because other places around the world now have Bitcoin ETFs. I think it's just a matter of time until the US does the same. And so, yeah, really, we're all looking for what happens with the Van Eck one. Now, if they don't get accepted, maybe there were better ones from Skybridge uh, and Fidelity and they could still get accepted. But if Van Eck gets knocked back, I wouldn't be surprised if the others do as well. All right. This is what makes me think we're not even close to the end of the cryptocurrency bull run, let alone Bitcoin. So Bitcoin retests 40000 as Biden announces $6 trillion budget. Biden is pushing Congress to spend more than ever before. Now, that's not quite exactly true. They spent more back in World War II, I'm pretty sure. But basically what they're going to do here, he's proposing to just constantly, every couple of years, constantly put more money back into the market uh, and spending up on, you know, building up America. So while that's good that they will build up America, so it's good for Americans, it means their dollar is going to constantly be devalued. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to go into uh, complete capitulation, but that bodes oh so well for things like Bitcoin. For just stores of value, I think, you know, property prices, you know, will increase. I think, you know, shares and stocks and things like that will increase because the dollar value continues to just basically be printed into uh, oblivion. Now, I'm not saying the US dollar is going to be printed into oblivion. It's always going to be there in some form, but it's definitely going to push it down. But again, they've done this before. So back in World War II, they you know printed a lot of money and put it back into, their, uh, into the economy uh, within the US. 
and look, the US has done really well since then. So it's not complete doom and gloom, but this is really bullish for cryptocurrencies. And this hasn't passed yet. We'll have to wait and see. But if it does pass, uh, yeah, I only see more uh, really big upside for things like Bitcoin, but not just Bitcoin, uh, assets in general. All right, so Jim Bianco owns a basket of cryptocurrency assets, including Ethereum, but has averted from purchasing Bitcoin. So not everyone uh, is a Bitcoin proponent, and we know that, but even people that are just coming into the cryptocurrency space, is Bitcoin losing its relevancy? I'm not quite so sure about that, but it does seem that there are people coming into the crypto space now and some you know, uh, big investors who don't see Bitcoin as the best buy. They're looking at things like Ethereum and other altcoins and things like that. And look, we know that a lot of the cryptocurrencies will outperform Bitcoin. It's just they also outperform Bitcoin to the downside. So their volatility is a lot more. Volatility is where the gains are made and there's still plenty of volatility in Bitcoin and that's the safest bet. But you know, if you're looking for the, the bigger gains, they really do come from the alt market. But you know, just be very, very careful. I, I really am you know, extremely serious when I say that. A lot of these altcoins, they're not going to be heard of in a few years. You know, they just basically go dead for a really long time and almost trade back to zero. Not quite, but they're going to lose a ton of their value. And I mean that, a ton of their value. They always sort of have. That's just the way these cycles work. I still like Bitcoin. I'm still buying Bitcoin, but I'm also uh, heavily invested uh, in alternative uh, coins for that exact reason. The upside is so much bigger, but I know that the downside is also much bigger as well. Right, last but not least. All right, speaking of consensus 2021, Brad Garlinghouse confirmed that Ripple still plans to go public after the lawsuit against the SEC. And there's, you know, constant talk about that, you know, this is going to be sorted sooner rather than later. And it's likely that uh, the SEC will either give up and Ripple will win. And again, I don't know. That could be the complete opposite. The SEC could absolutely win and smash uh, Ripple. And then all of a sudden, XRP is worth next to nothing. But look... If Ripple win, I think their price is going to surge and absolutely skyrocket. It's going to be a behemoth. And I think the Ripple IPO will be massive as well uh, if they can win. But that's the big thing, if they can win. All right, look, that's it from me. Weekend's upon us. I do expect further downside. It wouldn't surprise me. And again, it wouldn't surprise me if we come way down here and trade outside of these bands for quite some time market manipulation before we finally make make our way back up we'll just have to wait and see all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another if you're on that gain train at the moment you're doing well you outperform the market and i'll see you next time